What's up, y'all? Back with another video. Um, I actually just knocked out the other video on my page, if y'all watched it. The gun rant number one about the cardboard boxes and the plastic cases. No more cardboard boxes. Give us plastic cases. Um, sorry if y'all hear some background noise. My family's still up. But we're all night out, so we stay up late. But now, you go... And you purchase your everyday carry, your first gun maybe, and being that you're a new gun owner, you don't think about everything else that comes with it, and you go and get that first gun or everyday carry, and you think, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go, because I kind of made the similar mistake when I first got my gun, but that's not true. There's a lot of other things that come with getting your first gun that people don't tell you um so i got a little list right here just to keep me on keep me on track so let's go down the list a little bit um first off you need a good quality holster a kydex holster a hard plastic holster you know whatever they want to call it something that has level one retention meaning that it clamps in and it locks down to your gun um actually Hold on, give me one second, and I'll grab mine. This is my GX4. See, as, as, as like that. This is my in the waistband holster. Got it off Amazon for 20-some bucks. It's not a top-tier brand holster or nothing, but it gets the job done. I every day carry that all the time. Why I'm doing stuff and it's been fine. Don't get a leather holster or something soft like a nylon holster. I wouldn't recommend any of those because if you go to do something, you're carrying on a loaded chamber. If you look online, there's been cases where people's triggers have been pressed when they go to sit down or something presses against it and the gun goes off. Uh, there's a guy that had a leather holster. If you look online, over time, his leather holster got soft and warped and he sat down one day and shot himself through the butt um, so first thing you need good holster definitely need that you can't, don't carry in your pocket don't do that I made that mistake for a little bit when I was younger it was stupid but I never carried loaded in the chamber on in my pocket but yeah get a holster uh, a light to identify your target you definitely need that um, it's it's I need to get one on that one, but it doesn't have a rail, so I have to get a TLR. So, but if you if you have a pistol with a rail, you can get a light for reasonably price, you know, eighty bucks, hundred bucks. Um, the TLR is a little over a hundred, I believe. So if you have a gun that doesn't have a rail, you can still get a light. You need a light though to identify your target. Because you don't want to accidentally, you know, shoot a loved one in the middle of the night thinking it's an intruder. Or, you know, hear something out at night and you think it's somebody trying to attack you. And it could be somebody trying to come up for help. And they didn't get that chance to say something. But a light, definitely. So, hundreds of dollars, get you a light. Uh, reliable, reliable mags and backup mags. So you need to test your mags, especially if you buy any aftermarket mags. Sorry, my baby's in the background. Some mags, um, and then even your factory mags. Test those and test them over time. If you keep them loaded, you need to test them. Don't just think just because they worked once and that they're factory mags that they're always gonna work. Because that's not the case. Over time, they malfunction as well, just like any other mechanism. Good oil and cleaning kit. You need a good oil and a cleaning kit. I mean, like 30 bucks. Because you spend like 5 bucks on the Lucas. I get the Lucas oil. Um, it's machine gun rated, so it doesn't cook off. And it's like 6, 7 bucks. And then the cleaning kit's like 20 some bucks. You can go to Walmart, go on Amazon. Good cleaning kit. You need it. Keep up your gun. Plastic hard case, like we talked about in my pri my previous video that I told y'all about. Get a get a case if you don't have a, a safe, 
or somewhere to put it when you're at home, get a case. I would still recommend get a case because if you're traveling, you go to fly, anything. You go to the range. You, if you if you leave it somewhere, you want it locked away. A mag holder. So when I everyday carry, I also um, carry extra mag on me. So I used to carry it in my pocket, but realistically, you're not going to be able to usually get to it in your pocket in time. And it kept just falling all to the side, and I couldn't use my pocket for much. And so get you a mag holder. It'll save you a lot of headache. I had to learn the hard way, and then I went and bought one after about a year. They're 20 bucks. They go on your belt. Saves you a headache. And you got the extra mag in case you need it. Upgraded sights. And if you can, try to make sure they have a ledge so you can rack your gun with it. But uh, I need to get some upgraded sights for that GX4. Because it came down, it came with no night sights. I would recommend always trying to have something with night sights. So that way at night, you can see your sights, of course. So, and, and then the ledge is nice. So that way if your hands are full, like I'm a father, I have five kids. So... If my hands are full while I'm holding my baby girl or something, I could always rack that gun if I need to clear it or anything. Uh, a receipt for your firearm, please always keep a receipt. I learned this the hard way because my girlfriend, well, my wife now, my wife's car got uh, towed one time, and when they went to search the car, they found uh, my gun under the seat. Because I had left it in there the night before. We had went to the bar the night before. I Before we went in the bar, I had left my gun under the seat. Because I didn't want to be drinking with my gun on me. And I left it in there overnight when we had got home. And I went back out there the next day. And they had the car had been towed. And so they had turned it into the police station. And I couldn't get my gun back without a receipt. And I had to go to where I had bought the gun to get a receipt. Because I had thrown my receipt away when I bought the gun. Not knowing. Being young and dumb. And that's the only way I can get my gun back. There's no registration unless you file registration for some reason. So keep a receipt of your firearm. Proof of purchase, something. Uh, range time, ammo, and defense ammo. So you're going to have to go to the range and practice with your gun so that way you know how to operate your gun. And also that you're, you know proficient with your gun um, you don't want to get something and not be familiar with it and then you also need to run some defense ammo through it and make sure that that runs as well because you may buy some defense ammo and it may not agree with the gun I've had that happen once or twice but usually I try to keep a gun that isn't picky uh, every gun I've ever gotten that's picky with ammo I get rid of it and then I get something else and with range time and ammo, and that's where you're going to spend a lot of money, obviously. Because um, if you don't know somebody with a range, you got to go pay a range. And then the ammo, ammo's not cheap now. So, And then if you have a gun, you have to break in. If you go out there and get some Gucci gun that you have a break-in period on, you got to put hundreds of rounds through it to break in. Which means hundreds of dollars. Just in breaking in that gun. But you should put hundreds of rounds through it, just getting used to it anyways. Uh, insurance, I need to do this as well. You can put your firearms on your renter's insurance, possibly. Uh, from what I've heard, most renter's insurance companies will accept that on your policy. You'd have to call and check with whoever your company is. But... I'm about to do this with mine as well. Um, you can add them on your renter's insurance policy. That way, God forbid, if you know, there was a fire or somebody broke in or anything like that, flood anything. You want you know, like you got a lot of money wrapped up in stuff like that. You want to protect it. Uh, concealed carry permit. You know, that's a given. Everybody should know you want to get your concealed carry permit. And, uh... That'd be sorry. My wife was over there messing with me, She's distracting me. But your concealed carry permit is like fifty bucks. You sit through a class that's like half a day, at least in Virginia, which is where I'm at. 
storage for ammo. You pay like 20 bucks for it. You need um, something to keep your storage in. So preferably one of the ammo cases that you can buy at Walmart or Outdoor World, any of your gun shops. And then also safety gear for your for the range. Um, that's gonna be another fifty bucks. Yeah. So let's see. If we go back over, you know, as when I say safety gear, eye protection, ear protection. You need that when you go to the range. So let's see. If I add this up. Sorry, it's taking a minute. It's a lot more than y'all thought it was. Huh. You thought you'd just go buy your gun, you know, a little box of ammo, you'd be ready to go, huh? No. So, this is an investment. You got probably at least $500 worth of stuff right here. So, after you purchase your gun, that you're going to spend, you know, probably $500 on around average. And then you're going to spend another $500 at least. Because you're going to spend at least $300 on ammo. So, that you should do. But most of y'all don't, probably. But you're going to spend the ammo money. And then you're going to spend another couple hundred dollars on all the other stuff you need. Concealed carry permit. Your holster. Your light. So, that's easily five. You know, 500 plus 500 That's a thousand dollars right there. So, realistically, just so y'all know. Unless you go get, like, a budget concealed carry like this. I paid 270 for this. Uh, it's a Taurus GX4. But she's been reliable. I've ran maybe 100 rounds through this so far because it's still new. And I haven't been able to go to the range like I want to. But so far, 100 rounds was not a problem. No break-in no break period or anything. But, yeah, so just so y'all know, when y'all go to get a concealed carry or your first gun... You're looking at about a thousand dollars, at least seven fifty, even if you get a budget everyday carry like I did. So, don't think you're just going to go get your pew pew and get get your uh, little box of bullets and be be good to go. If you do that, you, it's pointless. You, you're you're a danger to everybody else and yourself. You need to get familiar with your gun and actually do it the right way. But until next time, y'all. Later.